So our next guest is a children's author and Ashley Scott is her name. And we're going to admit her to the show and see what her book is all about or her latest book. So um, Ashley Scott, welcome to Black Office Matter TV. And let's unmute your mic so we can hear you. Okay. Welcome to the show. Hi. Good evening or <laughs> happy evening. <laughs> well, okay. thank, you. thank you for being so chipper coming on here because I'm in the DMV. So it is nine o'clock at night where I am. It is nine o'clock at night here in Florida. And <laughs> it's just nine o'clock. This is what we do. <laughs> I You're love right. come on this late and they're chipper. So thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it's eight o'clock where I am. So anyway. <laughs> uh, Ashley, you uh, were recommended to us by Pam Perry, who is, uh, she is uh, a marketing guru and, and a really, really close friend of the show and for me personally. I've known her for about 20 years. And um, we met with books. We met, it's, it's been book related. Books brought us together. So um, you have a book called Zoe Goes to the Zoo. And now is this your first book? This is my first published book. Yes, it okay. is. Well, congratulations on that accomplishment. I know how it feels. And um all of the books, if you write future books, I will say every book feels like, it's like a baby. Every book feels like the first time. <laughs> it, it, it's exciting every time you get your, your box of books for the next release. It's just something about it. So now, who is Zoe? And oh why does she go to the zoo? And who is, what's the audience for your book? <laughs> So our audience is your um, primary students, which are your pre-K students, um, maybe two-year-olds through your kindergarten or first graders as well. Um, there are some people in there that are um, funny that only parents would be able to kind of understand those hidden messages in there. Um, and then it also features my daughter, Zoe. Um, she's a kindergartner, right? And so... Um, Zoe is the light of our family and she has so much personality. Um, so I am a owner of a preschool here, Oxford Learning Academy here in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, and it was very important to me that I created a work of art, not just for Zoe, um, but a work of art that kids can see themselves in as they're work, like as they're reading the book, but then there's the coloring book and then there's a workbook. So it's all of these three different pieces that goes into it. But for Zoe, it was like, oh my gosh, this is me. So when it came to picking up those early literacy skills, it's like, wow, I could see myself. Oh, this is us at the zoo. This is my owl. Um, so it was pieces in it that were very familiar with her, um, but it also became uh, an, an art of light for other kids in our community, as well as the schools in our community. We've probably, we've been on Toy Listy, we released in February, um, and we probably have sold well over a thousand books, like within that, that period of time as well. So it's definitely been a, a great experience. Well, that's wonderful. And congratulations about that. Because that's, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people, they hear about authors who sold a million copies of something. And right. uh, the average book, self-published, especially, and I don't know if yours is self-published, but the average self-published book sells about 250 copies over its lifetime. That's the statistic yeah. that the publishing industry and doing research has come up with. So if you're out there and you're self-published and you've sold more than 250 copies, you're already above average. So, you know, give yourself a hand for that. And so, and, and plus you've done it in a short period of time. Yes, yes. 
So is that the book behind you on the stand? Yeah, it is actually. Um, I've got one that's closer. So okay. Um, there, like I was sharing, is three pieces to it. Um, this first piece, um, is the book itself. It's on Amazon. So I actually went through Purpose Pals Publishing Company. Um, which is a local publishing company here in Tallahassee, but they have worked not just nationwide, but internationally on projects as well. And so it was important to me that I knew that I wanted to reach um, just, just having been a, a vessel that's traveled all abroad a lot. It was important for me that I reached outside of my home community. And so a publisher um, work best for me and my situation just because they had resources and access to um, populations that I didn't necessarily have. Um, so for me, that was more beneficial for me. But then we were able to get it on Amazon, um, Books a Million, Barnes and Nobles. It's, it's, it's everywhere at this point. Yes. That's great. So what... Um... Did you release all the three pieces at the same time? So no, they were staggered, but they were then they were in with like, like a two week period. So the book and the coloring book, they were released at the same time. The workbook um, that work, work um, that focuses on like phonological awareness as well as picking up um, writing pieces and elements of communication and things like that. I wanted our parents within our school community to have access to this before I, you know, went live with it in public. So this book actually followed all of the other two books like two weeks later, but that was just by choice. I, that was through our um, book signing and through the book signing, I was able to kind of release it like as a special thing for our parents. And then that just went um, viral as well within our community. Yeah, that's- um, Community, which is a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people are doing uh, when they're doing children's books. They're doing workbooks, or activity books, or um, like a curriculum to go along with the books, yeah. um, which helps get, if you're trying to pursue the public school market, a lot of the, or study guides, a lot of the teachers are looking for other materials to, as companions to the book. Now your Oxford Learning Academy, uh, it's, a, it's for preschoolers. Yes, so right? we, that is correct. We serve infants to five-year-olds, um, and those students then matriculate to the regular, you know, educational system. We have a, a quick surprise or a surprise that we're releasing as we're expanding within the fall, but for now, we partner with a lot of different schools. We do believe in school choice, so that is a thing that uh, we do believe in. And so with having that shared value systems, we do support not just private and charter schools, but we also um, support public schools. That's where my career started within supporting the public school sector. So we uh, have been blessed and fortunate to have a lot of partnerships with schools where our parents are able to create a seamless transition into kindergarten for their babies. Okay. Now your um your materials look very polished. So did the publisher provide the uh, illustrations and all the layout and all that, or how did you make that happen? It was a teamwork effort. Our my publisher is the best publisher ever. I know everybody says that, but I mean that. You know, when we started on this project in February and to be transparent is not an easy process, right? So I probably went through like 10 illustrators before my publisher was like, no, you're going to go back and you're going to sit and tell me every feature. I probably spent so much money just looking at different characters, just trying to figure out um, what the elements of us would look like because some of our illustrators created the characters, which are which is our family. They they created them identical to what we look like, and that was a little creepy for us. But um, <laughs> it, you know, I was like, whoa, you know. So then we just had, and there were just different elements with culture. You know, Zoe's hair is very much so natural, and it's very much authentic to what you see in the book. So I was looking to make sure that. 
Illustrator was able to create that def def defined curl sit pattern that she has, or even my son Ethan just elements alone. So I was able to really do a think tank with my publisher and she was very patient with me during the process as we built out everything. So it was de definitely a collective effort, but I would not have been able to do it without Kimmy Johnson. Okay. Well, it sounds like you had a pretty blessed journey because you were able to find everybody you need on the first time out. Was, was this something that was intentional for you? Did you kind of know who you wanted to go after or did things just kind of fall in place? You know, honestly, it's like life, right? Or like hiking to a summit, right? So everyone has their own journey. I can't say that it was an easy journey, but I can tell you when it, it was published, I was like, oh, I can breathe, like you said, that labor of love. Um, so I'm like, I'm not looking forward to having another baby right this second because my anxiety, <laughs> like, I was on 10. But yeah. um, so no, it really wasn't, it wasn't an easy process. Um, of course, having that publisher did make it easier because I was able to communicate. And then I paired that with our PR firm, which is um, Pam Perry. And so with working with her, it created a seamless process between her and of course the, the media perspective, but then I also have a content manager, um, Andrea Robertson or Andy Burns is what we call her. And so she was able, like we would have to meet and come up with what we're doing so that it created a seamless process. But of course you learn that at the end, like let's have meetings, but it's like the last two months. So we were developing this in like rapid time. So it wasn't easy just because, you know, nothing in life is easy. Um, and then, you know, you're, you, you think you're doing something right, but if you're listening and you're trusting to what um, God is downloading into you, it made it a little bit easier, but it wasn't, it, it was, it, it, I equate it to um, mentally the same amount it took energy mentally to open up a preschool or to quit your job, your nine to five job. That's what it was like to create mm -hmm. these materials. Oh, okay. Well. We, we've um, both been there. Um, uh, Rhonda still has her full-time. But she wor she works full-time on her own stuff. She has two full-time things going. So, <laughs> see, Rhonda, see, that's why you can laugh at 9 o'clock at night because you yeah. understand. Like, we're going to our second and third job right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the, you know, yeah. yeah. The second, you know, you take a little breather in the middle. And then, you know, nighttime is when I do my best writing. So, because it's quiet. Well, I, I actually started um, training myself to wake up earlier because um, my job gets very, very busy. And um, so I have to focus on my job. My, I'm talking right. about a nine to five job. I have right. to, I can't jump around on that. Mm -hmm. So I had to actually start waking up early. So, I have my alarm set for five. I might start moving around about 5.30 and I'll go ahead and get some writing done or finish an editing project or whatever it is I have to do. And then when it's time to log into work, I can put that away, focus on work, but I feel more comfortable focusing on work because I've taken time to take care of my clients. And then, I, and then I'll go to, and then I'll do, I'll start working on client work again until I fall asleep. <laughs> I, I think that's just how you do it, you know? Um, you have to be able to compartmentalize and kind of keep things in its own file cabinet in order mm -hmm. to kind of run multiple things at the same time. So it, you know, being an entrepreneur, a full-time one, you just work in windows, but that doesn't mean it's, you know, any less, you know, your job is less harder than mine. You just learn how to compartmentalize and some days it's just not a balance and then others, you just, you're able to fall in place. That's exactly. true. And and it's important to be able to uh, not take on too much that you can't finish. Uh, you, you have a lot of incomplete projects. I, you know, uh, I don't I don't like to have anything like that. And but but generally, once I decide, OK, this is the project, this is the project, this is the next thing, then execution is quick. I'm one thing. 
uh, one of my friends told me I need to take the evaluation thing where it tells you your strengths, but I already know my strengths. And so what execution is is probably my strongest. I can I can execute some stuff, but we all have different things that we're really really good at. And so, um, Rhonda, you have some strengths. What you do is you you are very dependable, and you know a lot of people are not dependable. <laughs> True. Yeah. Rhonda is very dependable. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so, and I didn't know that about her exactly before we started doing this show. I've learned that over the three years of doing this show. But I knew you were solid. Otherwise, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have worked on the collaboration. And when is that one that's going to keep you on task? So I need her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to just tell you right now, any day you pick the Zeta way, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be just good. Sarah. I know it's a Zeta. Yes, I can see, you know, I, I know my blue and white. I only <laughs> got on, look, I only got on green today because the books are green, but normally I'm going to be in blue and white. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you because I was looking at this comment from Brittany Jones, who is oh. a soul. And it says Zoe goes to the zoo, coloring book, phonics workbook, order to date. So yeah, have a sorrow who's on your side, you know. I know that's right, Sarah. <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm not a soror, but my daughter is, and so I, I support. Oh, I support no. the organization. <laughs> and if you know, I'm not Greek. If I were to pledge something, it would be Zeta. But at this oh. stage of my life pledging would not is not on my list but i support the zetas because my daughter's a zeta and i see what their um objectives are mm -hmm. and I, I like that it's not to say anything against anybody else i don't i'm not great we and i don't think anybody ideas. will be upset when we support my daughter and if they are shame me. so anyway <laughs> Anyway, we love all of our D9. We just Yeah, we and that's true. She tells me about that. The Divine Nine and uh, they work together and she tells me about all the stuff. She planned, she she chose um her own she had her own path because like I said, I'm not Greek. So she it wasn't a legacy type thing. She, you know, she could pick whoever she wanted. And she went to an HBCU. So, you know, that was part of the mix. Now I have a question about you doing all this um how many people are in your academy? How many students do you have in your Oxford? Well, we, we're able to serve 187. Right now, we have about 125. Um, okay. During the summer, we do run a camp in conjunction with our nonprofit. And so really, it's just like our nonprofit arm just completely runs this camp. Um, okay. But we're, we're committed to serving 110 students within the community at no cost. So those parents are there from, they're able to bring their kids from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The kids will get breakfast, lunch, and snack. Um, and then they have their remedial programs as well. So we've been running that one for about two years. It is independent. In it, but they're all your kids. You know, you get to learn, you get to know all of your families. Okay. Now you also do grant writing. Yes. And so for the audience that's out there, I know uh, I hear a lot of people talk about grant writing, but uh, what does it take to be a successful grant writer? What do you think? Oh my gosh. I think prayer, <laughs> um, you well, know, practice and perseverance. And I just spoke about those three P's this past Sunday, but truly prayer, you know, and making sure that you hone in on what, you know, it is that you're gifted to do, you know, that's a gift. And so we have to make sure, and it, for me, it, it's um, something that my mom, you know, started and just me being under the shadow of her and the wings of her just being able to be cultivated in that way since I was like 15. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, you know, something that I knew that that would become a gift of mine that passed on from her. Um, practice, because practice really does take, you know, make, make you become you. perfect and you begin to learn your craft in that process as well. And then, of course, just being persistent because you know, sometimes you may not get it on that first try, but you have to really research 
um, and get to know what it is that you're doing. So I will say grant writing is a work of art as well, but it's something that can be learned. Uh, it will take some time, but I've been doing it for like well over 16, 17 years and I'm within the last five years, probably like about 60 billion in now. So it's a, it's a different perspective for me. So you know what wow. you're doing. Basically what yeah, you're doing. that's what I'm saying. She knows what she's yeah. doing. I mean, Love people talk about grant writing, but actually getting the grants, getting the grants awarded, writing something that will get the grant awarded is people are people are true choosing grant writing as the new hustle. If you if you if you look on social media, you'll see people say things like, "You can get twenty thousand dollars for your business tomorrow." Just, um, DM me for information, and then. <laughs> And then you you um your message them to see what they're talking about. And they're like, all right, just send me your information. I'm like, I don't know you yet. Can you at least tell me what you're applying for? <laughs> you know, I'm not just absolutely, you know, and so I I it's one of those things where you just have to stay, have that tunnel vision. You yeah. know, I, I do know that there those things are out there on social media. I kind of don't really pay attention to them because I got enough going on on my own. Um, but I do know that if it sounds super easy, it's probably not something you should be engaging in. Um, and then, of course, you know, just working within systems and organizational systems with corporate companies or your larger multi-million dollar nonprofits, it's just it's just the whole conundrum of things. So grant writing is one aspect, but we have to make sure you have something that people are willing to invest in, but something where you're showing that you're expanding services and that those entities will get a return on investment for you serving your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's some things about that apply to just about any situation. If, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Uh, run okay <laughs> if it's a get rich quick thing run it's a scam all get rich quick uh what schemes or whatever <laughs> they're scams because you don't get rich quick and normally this is what happens on get rich quick the people who are the, like the original people they'll get rich and then when the bottom falls out then everybody else is a sucker you know they say it's a sucker born every minute so just if you, if it sounds too good to be true, like I, I had somebody DM me last week, so man, I don't even know him, but he said, get, send me your cash app and I, so I can send you $500. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, I too, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want my money. Why you see one on the show? I didn't mean to, but anyway. <laughs> but needless to say, you were not able to send him those items, so you were safe, and we we <laughs> she, see she comes with the sweetness behind it. <laughs> that give yeah, some who would, who would give a stranger five hundred dollars? I mean, I mean, nobody does that. So, but some people fall for scams. Yeah, you know. So, and it's a lot of scams on social media and online. <laughs> A place of being desperate and when sometimes when you're desperate True. and um somebody says something's going to be easy you kind of go for it and it may not always be the best thing for you um so that's why it's important to do your homework and so that's why i was glad that you know when we meant when she mentioned um grant writing as she was very forthcoming this is what i do um so it's totally different from somebody who says I can get you $25,000 tomorrow. Just send right. me um, No, I need yeah. to know. It's right. so true. I mean, even with that, you have to figure out if the grant is right for you because if this okay. grant is reimbursable, do you have $100,000 or twenty five dollars sitting in your account to make purchases so you could get reimbursed? So you have to look at it as wow. um, a system in its totality but okay. also something what you can manage as well. But also know that in today's climate, 
Now, in the early 90s, yes, we were giving money for startup programs, you know, programs that were supporting students that were at risk. You just, we were able to help, help. You know, hope you know, pass that money out back in the '90s, but it's not like that anymore. The climate has changed um, a lot since then. So now, those particular funds, you have some that are for startup, but they're rarely far and few between. You have to come with some deliverables, or you have to already come with a program established for that. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they, you know, they probably got burned. You know, the yeah. people who were giving just handing out money. And, you know, they learn quickly from a bad experience. And um, there's a question I was going to ask. Oh, so I didn't know, just based on what you just said, there's some grants where basically you have to have all the money. You have to have the money up front and they reimburse you. That's a whole different thing than getting the money where you can operate. Correct. So you have to really be well established to right. to have the resources to do that and wait to get it reimbursed. Yeah. Some funds they they do require you to have like a certain amount of money saved to let you know you your reimbursement has to travel through seven different hands before we even get it over to the finance department to, or the comptroller to reimburse you. So it does take you know some time, but Eventually, you learn the balance act, and then you're able to buy materials and supplies and things, or books, um, yeah. <laughs> to um, support what your mission is, and to mm -hmm. you know pull together the community in the way you need it to be pulled together. Well, we just have a few minutes left, but um, I I did want to find out what's next for your books. For my book, so we have kind of hit the ground rolling with our tour here, like in the, the Southern region. And so uh, over the summer, we actually have a lot of other programs that we'll be looking at in Atlanta, California as well. We have some partnerships up there as well as DC. This week we'll probably be in New York. Well, I know we'll be in New York this week, so not saying probably, so that's thing. Um, mm -hmm. With the books in general, just getting it out to the community, getting out to the world. We also have a unique partnership abroad in Europe, in the United Kingdom, and in Ireland. So I'm looking forward to being able to travel over there and even working with parents and providing them with some parent engagement or professional development on what skills they can do to help build out and prepare our kids for when they do matriculate to kindergarten. Okay, yeah. well, that's important, very important that children start off with the foundation. So, you know, when they get to kindergarten, they're not having to learn to their letters. You know, yeah. they, they already know some of the basics. And so um, tell people how they can get a copy of Zoe Goes to the Zoo. So you can go to archreaders.com. You're able to purchase the books. All three of them are there. Most conveniently, you are more than happy to go to Amazon.com. If you're a Prime member like I am, you're going to get them in like two days. <laughs> um, so go on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. They're, they're there. We just got connected with um, a book. I cannot even think. And my publisher would be like, Ashley, you know it. But this particular entity allows you to have access to like over 40,000 different uh, access, you know, points for people to purchase. So we were just able to get on with them. It takes a while for you to get your books out if you go through them. So we did Amazon first. So okay. definitely you can go on Amazon. If you have questions about grant writing, you want to know more about that. Instagram is where you can find all of the grant writing tips. You can add me at the real underscore a Scott, I'm on there. Follow me on there. Would love to connect with you all and talk about for Black authors, how do we get our books within nonprofit sector so that we can actually provide not just um, the resources and books, but representation because books are windows into cultures or into places and regions that we have never been. And so, yes, that's how you can find us. Okay. Well, those of you who are interested in grant writing or getting grants written or however Ashley handles it, reach out to her. And we really are excited about your project. Thank you so much for being a guest on Black Office Matter TV. Thank you for having me. And I want to just give a 
quick shout out to my family, my husband, John, who's in the book. And he's like, did I have to be the Bama of the week in the book? And I'm like, it's my book. You can write yours. <laughs> but um, if you read it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, the story is that Zoe loses her owl at the zoo and I'm going to keep it like that. And I'm just grateful for Zoe and Ethan, as well as our publishing company, Purpose Power Publishing with Kimmy Johnson, as well as Pam Perry and Andy Burns, who does all of our content. Right. Okay. Thank you so much and have a great evening, Ashley. You too. Good night. Good night.